When you first place rebar into a concrete element, its shape fits the maximum size that the concrete element's cover settings allow. The rebar is also constrained to these cover settings so that when the size of the concrete element changes, the rebar adjusts accordingly. However, in some cases, you may not want the rebar to be constrained to the cover settings. To see this, first place rebar in a beam. Open the Section 1 view. Next, on the Structure ribbon, in the Reinforcement panel, click Rebar. Click OK in the dialog that appears, and then select Rebar Shape S3. With Current Work Plane and Parallel to Work Plane selected in the Contextual ribbon, move the cursor over the beam. Press Spacebar until the rebar hooks are at the top, and then select the beam as the host. Then click Modify to end the command. Now select the rebar. In the Rebar Set panel of the Contextual ribbon, change the layout to Maximum Spacing, and then set the spacing to 1 foot, or 300 millimeters in the metric file. After rebar has been placed, you can override the host constraint behavior of rebar. First of all, you can use the shape handles and dot controls that are available on the sides and corners. For example, drag the bottom shape handle up and then drag one of the hook dot controls down. To be more precise, in the Host panel of the Contextual ribbon, click Edit Constraints. This opens the Edit Constraints dialog, which contains a table that you can use to adjust the constraints. There are multiple columns in the table. The first column, Bar Handle, lists the available positions of the bar that are dependent upon a constraint. The list will vary, depending on the rebar shape. When you select one of the rows, the associated portion of the rebar highlights in the drawing area along with the constraint target. With the dialog open, you can zoom and pan in the drawing area as needed. The constraint target is the face of an element that the bar handle is referencing. You can change the target by expanding the drop-down and selecting another face. You can also select To Cover to force the constraint to the rebar cover of the host. After the constraint is specified, you can enter a specific offset in the Constant Offset field. This is simply the distance from the bar handle to the constraint target, or to the cover reference of the host if two cover is selected. For example, since you moved the bottom shape handle up, bar segment 2 has a negative constant offset. Negative values move the constraint toward the center of the host, whereas positive values move the constraint outside of the host. Change the constant offset for bar segment 2 to minus 3 inches, or minus 75 millimeters in the metric file. For the change to take effect, you must click Set as Preferred with the row selected. When you do, an asterisk appears after the bar handle and the constraint target. This indicates that the current constraint has been overridden. In order to remove the override, click Find Default. When you do, the constant offset still remains. You can also use Show Current to return the selected row to the current constraint. For example, select To Cover in the Bar Segment 2 row. At this point, you could click Set as Preferred to override the constraint, but if you wish to see the current constraint, click Show Current. As far as the bar handles that are available for any shape, the bar plane is the placement plane of the rebar. So in this case, you could set a constant offset to establish where the rebar begins in the beam. The start of bar and end of bar handles allow you to adjust where the rebar starts and ends respectively. Out-of-plane extent is available since the layout is set to maximum spacing. 
This allows you to set where the last rebar is extended to with respect to the beam. For this example, set the constant offset for the bar plane and out of plane extent to minus 1 foot or minus 300 millimeters in the metric file. Make sure to click Set as Preferred after each change. Then change the constraint target for start of bar and end of bar to the bottom face of the floor. Also set the constant offset to 3 inches or 75 millimeters. Once again, make sure to click Set as Preferred after each change. Then click OK to close the dialog. Pay attention to the changes in the rebar. Switch to the default 3D view. When you select the beam that is hosting the rebar, it becomes transparent, and you can see the rebar in the beam.